Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're doing a bunch of work getting ready to pull those heads off. So follow along and here's a quick introduction. That's well, off. Oh, yep. There's one belt. And I have no idea how you would even do this in the vehicle, but... That's not gonna come off easily. So, we're working on the transmission now. I started popping all the clips off for the connectors and back here as well. There's a few on the bottom, but I'll tackle those in a moment. And then, yeah, we just gotta undo all the bolts on the bell housing, slide it on back. I'm gonna undo that bracket that we were talking about earlier. Out of the way, it's out of the way. Time to undo all the bell housing bolts. They're all 13 millimeters. And all I'm gonna do right now is just loosen them. Just no, really remove them. Next up, we're gonna get the engine hoist in place and hoist the trans off. Got the engine hoist out, and we got the orange ratchet straps. Orange means safety, so this is gonna be a safe lift. Okay. Are you ready for this? Let's go. So we don't destroy the input shaft. Ooh. Oh, don't do that. There we go, nice and level. I almost pinched myself. Ooh, this throw up bearing is very crunchy. All we'll try to do is turn the engine and I kind of see. Huh, look at that. And it just like stops right there. Whatever. I'm trying to take off this, what seems to be a crossover tube for the coolant, I believe. There are three bolts on the back of it, uh, both heads, and they are a T30. Everything is zip tied to everything, and you know, you take one thing off, three other things want to come with it. Three things are connected to it. Three, three of these, like the zip tie holders. That's well, off. Oh, yep, it's got coolant in it. Cool. What I'm trying to do is get my stupid ratchet strap under the supercharger, because that's probably how I'm gonna lift it. Is it correct? Probably not. Do I care? A little. It can handle like 500 pounds of static loading, huh? We'll find out when it blows up. So we got the rear ratchet strap on the front. I'm also going to try to go around the supercharger. Okay. Coolant. Coolant everywhere. Our next goal is to put the subframe back into the Jaguar. Um, obviously do all the nuts up so we have the, the long front bolt, which is a 21 millimeter, the rear subframe bolt, which I think was a 17 or a 15, and then we have the, the strut top nuts that need to go in. And then after that, uh, Put the nuts on the upper control arm to hold the spindle in place and then mount the calipers back onto the spindles. Nothing more. Oh, we'll probably hook up the steering linkage as well while we're reversing out of this unit 
to allow us to kind of position the car where we want it to go. We took care of some zip tying in the engine bay. Just got stuff out of the way and now we're gonna push this under the car and get it all situated. Blow out some of the junk. So next up we're going to reconnect the upper ball joint with a spindle and we're going to bolt on the calipers again. The upper ball joint nut is an 18 millimeter, and then the caliper bolt is a 15 millimeter. And this is the nut we had to cut. If you plan on reusing your upper bolt joint or your whole upper control arm, do not do this. This will destroy the boot, but I'm just going to do it to tighten this because again the car is not going anywhere. It has no drivetrain in it. So all I need to do is tighten this up for it to be movable. We're continuing today with the F-Type engine. The goal for today will be to remove the supercharger. I think the engine jumped timing. Uh, we're not sure though if that's actually what happened. It might have spun a bearing as well. So today is just kind of getting everything ready to actually check the timing. And then we also printed out a bunch of documents just kind of the instructions from Jaguar how to do all these individual pieces. So, first step that we'll go with is the removing the accessory belts, both for the supercharger and the accessory belt. I'm sure this is pretty well documented online, uh, how to remove the accessory belt. This is the tensioner for the accessory belt and then how to remove the supercharger belt. Uh, but for me, when I was underneath it, I didn't know. So what you need is a half inch drive. We just have a breaker bar. And you will install the half inch breaker bar right behind where the pulley sits. And for the accessory belt, you want to turn it clockwise. And by doing so, it'll relieve tension on the belt. The reason the belt is currently loose is we do not have the AC compressor sitting here. And so the belt's just loose. For the supercharger belt, same story, but I think you have to go counterclockwise. And once you go counterclockwise, you can actually pull the belt off, probably from the supercharger, if that's the easiest and most accessible location. But once you have that done, you relieve tension and take off your tool. One interesting thing about the accessory belt is you will not be able to remove it with the accessory belt tensioner in place and what seems to be the actual idler pulley for the supercharger belt. So we'll start off by removing this tensioner and while we're here remove the supercharger tensioner as well. This is a 13 millimeter bolt. The supercharger tensioner uses a 16 millimeter bolt. Once that's removed, we can just go ahead and remove this bracket. To remove the supercharger belt idler bracket, there are four 13 millimeter bolts. So 
So what we have remaining now is this idler, this idler, and this idler, which is bolted on using a bracket going from the block to the head. For these guys, we will be popping off the caps. After popping the caps off of the two idlers here, we will undo the 16 millimeter head bolt. One thing to keep note of, it seems that the driver's head idler pulley has a spacer on the back of it. And so make sure to leave, put that back on when you're mounting this idler. To remove this bracket for the accessory belt, you'll use a 10 millimeter, and then there are three bolts holding it in place. Next thing we're doing is removing all the electrical connectors that we have here. On the front, you have the two. Plug everything, snap any of these. So at the back of the passenger head, there is this stud, and that stud does have a ground wire going to it. And it seems to be very tight, so just make sure to not miss this. We're now at the back of the AJ126 and this is where kind of all the electrical cabling meets up and the two plugs that go into the ECU and TCU probably. It's a mess back here I'll be honest. So you have a bracket, it's kind of hard to see, but the bracket is held down on the supercharger with the two T30 bolts. Well, on the supercharger cover. I unbolted that a while back. And after undoing the, all the cam sensors, cam phaser connectors, injectors, spark plug connectors here on the side, on both banks actually, you can start to get this harness pretty loose. And the one thing holding me up is on the bottom of the supercharger, there's a connector on the driver's side so if I undo that, this whole assembly should come undone. One quick note when working with these plugs, I usually press on the clip that holds it in place until you hear it click. I pushed it down, pushed the clip down with a flathead and it popped right open. But once it pops open, it's pretty easy to unplug. Yeah, there goes all the wiring. Uh, it's still connected to the block, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. And under that loom cover, uh, it seems like we just have vacuum lines for this. It pretty much just collects the noise from the intake and the heads and whatnot and pumps it into the cabin, which is kind of cool. So if you're gonna undo this, there are two T30s on the back of the passenger side uh, intake track. There's a T30 on the back of the supercharger and one on the bottom of the passenger side. There is a plug on this bracket, it's right here, this gray guy. And I have no idea how you would even do this in the vehicle, but if you undo it, the whole unit should come off. If you've already removed the supercharger cover, there's gonna be six bolts in the runner track that you'll have to undo. And I believe the supercharger then just comes up. So one thing I've read online is that this supercharger can be difficult to pull off of the vehicle depending on the age. The reason for that is there are, 
I believe two or four locating pins for the supercharger. And so those pins like to corrode and then the supercharger just kind of gets stuck. So prying on some locations on the supercharger, I was not able to get it loose. And so what I'm gonna do is remove the throttle body and anything else that I can just to avoid any carnage. I don't really wanna be replacing a throttle body or even the coupler for the supercharger or any of these components because of my laziness to remove additional items to pry the supercharger up. To remove the throttle body, it is four T30s, and then it just comes right off. And there seems to be a coolant hose on the bottom of it, so make sure to remove that. Do I have any tips? I do not. That's a lot of corrosion. Ooh. This corrosion on the valve cover bolts is actually very scary. I, I don't think there's a head anymore on those. Take a look at this. That's not gonna come off easily. If you own a Jaguar AJ126 and it has that padding right here, or even here, remove it immediately. This will make any job take forever, especially if you take your car to the mechanic. Alternatives, take some uh, WD-40 and just spray it in there and pray that those bolt heads are not gone. I don't know, that's gonna be fun. What? Oh boy.